Yo, what is good people? It's Vodzobit here. Today I would like to show you a pretty simple way to live loop MIDI items in Reaper. If you don't know me, my name is Dominic, but they call me Vodzu, and I'm making beats in Reaper. If you want to see more of Reaper beat making videos, please consider subscribing to the channel with all the notifications so you won't miss any new upcoming videos. You can also follow me on Instagram, the link is in the description down below, so you will be up to date with everything I'm making besides YouTube. And most importantly, if you need a Reaper beat making 101 online lesson with me, you can check the offer on my website. If you want to join our Reaper beatmaking community, you can join my Discord server, my Facebook group, or my Reaper beatmaking subreddit. Or if you've been watching me for some time and you like the content that I am putting out, you can make a donation or use any of the affiliate links I've provided in the description down below. I'm always earning a small commission from anything you purchase through those links. And now let's get back to the topic of today's video. My very first experience with live looping was with a machine made by Native Instruments. And I just really liked the idea of hitting record and adding things to the loop along the way without hitting stop every time I finish recording something. And there are only actually a few things you have to set up to make it possible in Reaper. So let's get to the grind. So here is my beat template opened in Reaper. This means I already have all my MIDI input set up. So whenever I arm a track for recording, it just works. I'm going to make this a little bigger because today we'll be working on the drum bass only. So before we start, this is my usual approach uh, when I'm making beats. So the first thing I'm doing, I'm just arming the track for recording. Uh, let's use the snare in this case. I'm just hitting record, recording the pattern. And when I finish recording the pattern, I'm just hitting stop. Then I can crop it to the active take in the take menu. Take and crop to active take, or I can just hit glue items. Then I'm always quantizing everything. And that's my usual approach when making a drum pattern. But the thing is, I would like to record the whole drum pattern without hitting stop. I just want to record everything and then quantize everything after I finish the pattern so I can just jam a little bit. Okay, so let's delete this track. Let's unarm this from recording. And here we start. First of all, we need to change the Reaper's behavior when it's overlapping takes. So I don't want Reaper to make a few takes available for selection after I finish recording. I just want to overdub an existing take. So I'm always adding new MIDI items to the take. Look, I'm going to select all of my drum tracks. Then I'm going to right click the meter right here. I'm going to switch the record input to record MIDI overdub slash replace. And I'm going to select record MIDI overdub. Right now, and this is really important, insert new MIDI item because we need a MIDI item we can fill with our notes. Otherwise, if we hit record, the take will start at the first hit, not at the beginning of the loop. One, two, three, four. Nothing, nothing. There is nothing on the screen. And as I start recording, the take starts uh, at the first hit of the hi-hat. So let's get back to uh, the MIDI item. That's why we need to insert the MIDI item before we start recording. And now I can record hi-hats in a loop with overdubbing. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I've recorded a half of the loop and now I'm thinking about the second part of the loop. And I can add some more notes to this existing pattern. And that's how MIDI overdubbing works in Reaper. So you can add more MIDI notes to an existing MIDI item. Okay, but what about not hitting stop while we are recording because this video is about live looping. Let's delete the item we've just made. Let's unarm this track from recording mode. Let's select all of those drum tracks once again. And now I am right clicking the track. And here in the third section, we have automatic record arm when track selected. And now, as you can see, as all of our tracks are selected, all of our tracks are armed for recording. So when I select hi-hats, only hi-hats are armed for recording. Same with another hat, snare, clap, clap, kick. So right now we could just hit record and just click another track as we want to record another layer. But I would like to make this a little more convenient so we don't have to use our mouse uh, to switch between tracks. So right now I'll make two new keyboard shortcuts so I can move to an upper track as well as I can move to a lower track. Let's go to the actions menu, show action list. First I'm going to look for the next track. And at the bottom of the list we have 
track go to next track. By default, it's triggered by the combination of control, alt, and down, but I would like to have it under just one key, so I'll use the numeric keyboard uh, for moving trucks up and down. So the eight with the up pointing arrow will be for moving trucks up, and two with the down pointing arrow will be used to moving to a lower track. So we have this feature selected, I'm clicking add, and now I'm pressing two on the numeric keyboard. And now I'm going to look for previous track. And here it is, go to previous track. And for the previous track, I'm going to use the upper arrow, so num8. Now we can close this window, and now as I press those keys, I can just move in between tracks. If you have a DAW controller like Presonus fader port, you already have this feature right here. Or you can just use any other DAW controller. But most probably, most of us doesn't have those fancy controllers, so you can just stick with the regular keyboard and you will be fine. And the last thing we need to do is to add the empty MIDI items to the session. So insert new MIDI item and just do it for all of those tracks. And right now it's a good time to make a project template so you don't have to set everything up every time uh, you create a new project. So go to File, Project Templates, Save Project as Template, and let's just name it Live Looping. Okay. So now we can hit record and have a jam. For this purpose, I'll just move the camera angle so um, you can see the keyboard along with the MIDI controller. A little more light. Great. One, two, three, four. Okay, next track, and we can add some lower hi-hats. One, two, three, four. Okay, the snare. Okay, next track, the clap. And that's all, and the kick. And now we can stop the recording and we have all of those items recorded. And now as we stopped recording, this is the moment for quantization. So now you have to open every MIDI item we've just recorded separately, select all of the notes and just quantize them. And that's how our loop sounds after quantization. And the last thing I would like to tell you about in this video, uh, let's get back to the project template we've just saved, live looping, so we are getting an empty session. You can quantize your MIDI items on the input, so you don't have to quantize them after you finish recording. The main advantage of this feature is that you already have your items quantized, but the very big disadvantage is that sometimes you can't predict what kind of notes you will be playing. So for example, as I'm playing uh, trap hi-hats with uh, hi-hat rolls, Sometimes I'm using triplets, sometimes I'm using just really fast 16th notes or 32nd notes, and you can only quantize to one type of note. Let's have a look. Let's select all of those tracks once again. Let's right click on the meter right here. And here we have track recording settings, input quantize, format, etc. And here in this window, you can quantize track MIDI recording. And most of the times I'm just setting it to 16th notes because that's the usual uh, type of the note I'm using in all of my patterns. And now as you've turned on the quantized track MIDI recording, you have to apply those settings to all of those tracks. And you can close this window. So to demonstrate this, I'll just record a simple kick and snare pattern. One, two, three, four.
and maybe let's add some hi-hats. And now as we stop the recording, we can open any pattern we have and all of those items are just quantized with the parameters we've set up in this previous window. And that's basically how you can easily live loop MIDI items in Reaper. Do not close this video right now. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel with all the notifications so you won't miss any new upcoming videos about Reaper and making beats in Reaper and about anything I'm making. Yep, that's all. My name is Dominic, you've been watching Vozo Beats and keep the good vibes alive.